Have you ever thought to yourself, man, I should have tried this, or man, I wish I would have known that before I did this, or maybe I should have done a little bit more research. We've all been there. We've all done that. Stay tuned in this episode. We're going to go over the five things we wish we would have known before using Upstart Epoxy. Number one, it's so important to pour the exact amount of epoxy, folks. Resin and hardener. Part A, part B. It's crucial. The reason these containers, these mixing containers, have these little lines is to guide us and tell us. It's so easy. But sometimes we get a little sloppy, we get a little loose and think, hey, well, we can pour a little bit under or a little bit over. Don't do it. I've had problems where I've either under poured or over poured and either my epoxy won't cure or it stays tacky and sticky and never solidifies the whole way through. And even if it does manage to solidify, the surface still stays sticky and there's still sticky parts. That could be attributed to mixing, but if you have the wrong ratio, it's not gonna work. It's gonna fail every time. So it's important, important that you go straight up to that line and that you make it to that line. Not a hair under, not a hair over. Number two, never use your heat gun too close to your product, folks. The reason being is that if you have that heat gun too close to your epoxy for too long of a time, you're gonna create what's called a sudden cure for your epoxy. And what it does is it hardens that little area that you're focusing on too much and it creates like a scab. So the rest of your, your project, the rest of the resin remains curing, but that little part is already hard enough and your piece is basically not ruined at that point, but you're gonna have to wait for the rest of it to cure and you're gonna have to sand it all over again and get it all done all over again. And that's not fun. And the reason that that occurs, the reason that would drive us to heat a certain little area like that too much would be because there's bubbles coming out. The reason those bubbles are coming out is because there's air either in the grain or in the fibers of the wood or the wood isn't completely dry. So it's always important and it's always imperative to make sure that your wood is 100% either kiln dried or air dried or just dried. You can purchase a uh, moisture content reader, which you can find right here. And we always use that for any slab that we get, any pieces of wood, just to make sure. The manufacturer, wherever you get your wood from, should tell you that it's air dried or kiln dried. But I always like to use a fail safe measure and hit it with the moisture content reader just to make sure that it is fully dried, folks. And usually like 6%, 6 to 8% is good. Anything less than that, of course, is, is ideal. So that's what will happen. I remember one time I was doing a project, I was doing a small table and I kept heat gunning it. And usually you should only heat gun it three or four times if you're doing like a flood coat. Uh, if you're doing a flood coat, that's what we're talking about. And these little bubbles kept popping out in this one area. And I kept hitting it with the heat gun, hitting it with the heat gun. And then I stayed there with the heat gun for like a minute. Flash cured, ruined. I had to take it apart, I had to sand everything and start all over again, folks. Plain it, everything was terrible. So always remember, if you get those bubbles, don't stay focused on them because you'll flash cure that portion of the product and your piece and you don't want that to happen. So that really takes us into step three. Always make sure that you seal coat, folks, before you do a flood coat, always. You take away any chance of any bubbles coming out when you do that because the purpose of a seal coat is to do just that, to seal your piece. Okay, what the seal coat is gonna do is it's gonna go in there and the epoxy is gonna cure in all those areas that have either, you know, uh, wood grain or, or possibly wet areas. It's gonna go in there and it's gonna solidify in there and harden in that section that we may not see from the surface, but we'll know because the bubbles will come up and that air will be forced out and it'll be show up in your flood coat. You don't want that. That's the reason you seal. Now, a good rule of thumb when you're doing a seal coat is to use an ounce per square foot. An ounce of resin, tabletop epoxy, for each square foot of your piece. And what that'll do, like I said, is that'll go in there and it'll settle into all these little areas, pockets of air in your wood. 
and it won't allow for the bubbles to come up when you're doing the flood coat because it'll be sealed. Now sometimes you gotta do a you gotta do two seal coats. Oh well, it's more product, but in the end you're making a better piece that's a representation of you. You don't want your flood coat with divots or you know pieces of debris or dog hair, cat hair. You don't want that in your flood coat. You want your final piece to look like a sheet of glass, like an ice skating rink. If you number four, always make sure your surface area is clean, folks. Always. Whenever you're gonna pour a flood coat, especially because any of the debris or leftover debris that was from maybe say another project you were working on is there. And if you put your little painter's pyramid, you put your piece on there to flood, well, guess what? When you hit it with the air gun or you use your torch or whatever, you're causing air. You're causing stuff to rise up from whatever's underneath that surface. And there's all, I mean, there's enough dust in the air, unless you're in like a totally dust free area, which I don't think so. I think a lot of makers do this either in their shop or maybe a dedicated pour room, but there's always dust, dander, and debris floating around in the air. It's just part of life. So the best way to, um, make sure that none of that gets into your flood coat and your piece is either to cover it, which is kind of, that's kind of up in the air. We'll discuss that in another topic because I'm not a big fan of covering. Um, but the best way to do that is to make sure that your area is clean. And, and the absolute best and easiest way to do it is to lay a new sheet of plastic underneath your pouring area. If you do that, you don't have to worry about previous debris from previous jobs or products that you've made being on there. I know it's easy to just go ahead and just throw your painter's pyramids there, your little stands, put your product on and do a flood coat, seal coat, whatever, and walk away and come back and you're gonna see all kinds of stuff after you've done the heat gun in your flood coat. You don't want that, folks. So it's a good idea just to take that extra step, put a new sheet of plastic, make sure your area is pretty much clean, uh, no debris around, and you ain't gotta worry about it. You'll get a flawless flood coat every time. Number five. Pot life. Pot life is basically the duration of time that your epoxy can sit in your mixing container. Now with tabletop epoxy, which is a one-to-one -one ratio, that heats up a lot faster than say deep pour. Deep pour, you can leave it in the container for 15 hours, come back and still be able to stir it. You try that with tabletop and your stir stick's gonna get stuck in there. I've experienced leaving tabletop epoxy in containers for too long and they start to smoke and they start to cure and they almost catch on fire, they burn your container. You don't want to do that. I remember one time I was working on a pretty big table and like a dummy, something I wish I would have known, don't pour all your tabletop epoxy into three different containers that you you know that you want to pour unless you're gonna pour them pretty quick. Oh, I was pouring the first one and I was messing around with some detail and this and that, and I looked to the corner there, and one of my containers is starting to smoke. It stunk up the house, it burned the container. I had to get it with some gloves and take it outside. It was brutal. So you always wanna make sure, folks, that you don't have a long pot life for tabletop epoxy. Remember, deep pour is okay, but tabletop epoxy, you wanna pour it, mix it, stir it, Put your pigment whatever and then get it poured onto the surface of your product and your work area always important folks remember don't leave tabletop epoxy in the pot for too long and two by too long i'm saying longer than 15 minutes because at the volume at the sheer volume of tabletop epoxy if it's even at two inches or an inch it's gonna start heating up Tabletop epoxy is only meant to be poured in an eighth of an inch. Maybe even a little bit more you can get away with and maybe even a little more than that. But if you leave it just sitting there at that sheer volume, it's got nothing else to do except to start that exothermic reaction and heat up and burn your thing, you burn your mixing cup, maybe even your house. Be careful. Once again, this has been Steve with Upstart. We hope that this video helped you and was a little bit informative. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below in the comments section. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe. We do videos every week and we try and teach and make you a better maker. So once again, this has been Steve with Upstart. We'll see you next time.